Our 4000G series is what we call an inline console as opposed to a split console design. It's made up of individual meters and I.O. modules, a master section to control everything else, the automation and synchronization section, and the global statuses that modify the way each module and audio path behaves. While the SSL 4000 series of consoles can be outfitted with up to 1 million modules, our particular console has 32 mono modules and 32 recording bus outputs. In addition, like you'd find on every good console, there is a 4-band equalizer and dynamics processor on each channel strip for processing and sweetening your sound. Finally, there are also two faders for the two signal paths in each module. One is a 100mm long throw VCA fader, and the other is a 60mm short throw audio fader made by Penny and Giles. One quick thing to point out is that while this console was originally equipped for producing quad surround sound, here in Studio C we'll only be using it to produce stereo recordings and mixes. However, even though we'll not be making any use of its quad surround features, we'll still refer to it as the quad bus. Like other large format inline consoles, the SSL 4000G has two separate signal paths running through each of the channel modules. We're going to refer to these as the channel path and the monitor path. We will further define these two paths using six key points that the audio signal flows through. By selecting the different global status options, the SSL computer arranges these six key points differently essentially giving us a very configurable console in a very small space. The six key points we'll discuss are the two inputs, the channel input and the monitor input, the two faders, the small fader and the large VCA fader, and two separate outputs, the multi-track bus output and the quad master output. Let's first look at how the two signal paths behave and what they're used for. The main channel path is used as an input channel for microphones and line level signals during the tracking and recording phases as well as during mix down. The monitor path is used to mix the recorded signals returning from the multi-track for the speakers and the mix down deck. For most status settings the large VCA fader controls the main path you'll be using. However, it can be switched to the other path by using the VCA to monitor status. Since most of you will start off with a mix down project on this console, we'll start by looking at the arrangement of the six key points in the mix status mode. Signal flow of main channel path in mix status. The mix status is the one you use when you want to, well, mix. In mix mode, the six key points show us the following audio signal flow through the console. First, the main channel picks up via the line input, which is typically coming back from the tape machine, which can be adjusted with the line gain control if needed. However, unless the meters show the line input is pegging in the red, just leave it pointing straight up like the Eiffel Tower. The signal then passes through the large VCA fader and is sent through the left-right pan pot to the quad mix bus and his good friend, Mr. Master VCA Fader, which, when turned up to Unity Gain, produces absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, in order to hear our signal for any of the global statuses, we must also make sure that our main monitor volume knob is turned up to an acceptable level. Go ahead and start with 4 or 5. And that none of the monitor matrix buttons are selected. Now, I know you're wondering, what about the three key points for the other signal path? Well, I'm impressed with how quickly you're catching on, but patience, Grasshopper. Patience. Signal flow of monitor path in mixed status. The monitor channel input is received from the tape machine playback when ready tape is selected on the monitor input selector, or from the console's group amp outputs when ready group is selected. While you won't necessarily use this path a whole lot during your initial mix downs, it can be used to add an extra 32 inputs into the consoles via the tape monitor input jacks, which, as they say, is uber cool. The signal then travels to the small fader. Then, like a poorly dressed traffic cop on his way to the donut store, if the direct button is pressed, 
the signal goes directly to that module's corresponding numbered output. Okay, that was a really bad analogy. In other words, pressing the direct button on module 23 will send the signal out bus output 23. Also, if the direct switch is pressed, its corresponding bus number is deactivated. In other words, don't even try it because it ain't going to work. If you'd like to route the signal to a different output number, make sure that the direct button is not pressed and select your preferred outputs for the monitor path on the output routing matrix. The routing pan pot will allow you to pan between odd and even recording buses if two or more of them are selected. Finally, if you know nothing about gain structure and you're sending too many signals at the same output, the recording bus signal strength can be adjusted with the group trim control on that number of channel strip, but we'll look more at that later. Signal flow of main channel path in record status. The record status can be used for tracking and initial recording sessions if you're an idiot. It's just a bass backwards way of doing things. Just for clarity though, let's quickly run through the organization of the six key points in the record global status. Okay, you've been warned. Hold on. Microphone signals are received via the channel input, key one, and boosted like a baby in a restaurant with the mic gain knob. This signal is passed to the large VCA fader, key two, then on to the console's bus outputs, key three, via the direct switch or the routing matrix. These outputs feed the corresponding inputs to the multi-track deck where they're recorded onto individual tracks of tape. Take a breather, there's more. Signal flow of monitor path in record status. The monitor channel input comes from the playback of the tape machine in the ready tape key four position of the monitor input selector. Or, to hear what the signal sounds like before going to the tape machine, the ready group button will temporarily monitor that channel's group amp output. So you can easily compare what your signal sounds like before going to tape and after. The signal is then passed through the small fader, key five, which then feeds the mix bus, the quad bus of the console, key six, through the left right pan pot. Whew, see I told you that was silly. Well, let's look at the more common method of setting up an inline console for tracking, and I think you'll agree with me even more than you already do. Signal flow of main channel path in record plus VCA to monitor status. Now as I said earlier, the record status is actually, well, just a plain old wrong way of using this console on a multi-track recording project. In fact, you'll find that a far more effective, appealing, and all-around glamorous method is to use the record plus VCA to monitor status. Here's why. The only difference between the record and the record plus VCA to monitor statuses is the faders which are used in each of the signal paths. In the record mode, the fader is used to control the amount of signal sent to tape. And the small fader is used to make a mix of the signals coming back from tape. However, most engineers prefer a longer fader for creating their initial and final mixes. Makes sense, right? Not a shorter one. As the saying about technology goes, bigger is better. It's kind of like the phases of the moon or the rising of the tides. Just let it go. Therefore, by engaging the VCA to monitor button, the six key points flow as follows. Microphone signals are brought into the channel input and boosted like a pair of elevator shoes via the mic gain knob. That's old hat. If your mics need a little more juice, 48 volt phantom power can be applied for a condenser microphone and a phase inversion switch is also provided if two of your mic signals aren't playing nicely together. The signal then zips out over to the small fader, key two, which controls the amount of signal going to the bus output, key three, which is chosen by either the direct switch or the routing matrix. Whichever output is selected will then feed the same numbered input and track on your multi-track recording deck. Starting to get it? To summarize, it's channel input, to small fader, to bus output, to multi-track. Voila! Repeat 24 or more times for instant recording bliss. Signal flow of monitor channel path in record plus VCA to monitor status. Like we just noted, by adding the VCA to monitor status, we've made the large VCA fader the monitor fader. In other words, it's monitoring or listening to what is coming back from tape. 
The monitor channel input comes from the playback of the tape machine via the Ready Tape monitor section, key 4. Or, to hear what the signal sounds like before going to the tape machine, the Ready Group button will temporarily listen to that channel's output. So you can easily compare what your signal sounds like before going to tape and after. Again, we'll talk more about this later on. This signal is then passed through the large fader, key 5, which then feeds the quad bus of the console, key 6, through the left-right pan pot. This actually has several advantages over using record status alone. Other than the fact that it makes you look cooler because more buttons are lit up, it also allows you to use the large faders to build a rough mix, even from the very beginning of the recording session, although the coolness factor cannot be overstressed. Also, because of the VCA automation features built into the SSL computer, it will be possible to easily make quick mixes and snapshots during the sessions that can be recalled and built upon at a later time, rather than starting over from scratch in mix mode. Very cool. Although, doing this when charging by the hour can be rather lucrative. Replay status. The replay status is only used for playback of the tape during a recording session. This status affects the signal flow in the monitor channel only. Choosing this status will make the console monitor channel receive the tape machine playback even if the ready group button is selected. Wow, how cool. Not really. Because of the way our console is configured and the ease of recording and monitoring with the record plus VCA to monitor status, you'd have to be socially and intellectually backward to use this status mode. It's built into the console because of the differences in the way some of those wacky British engineers run a recording session. For example, many of them will monitor their channels off of the sends to tape, rather than from the returns from tape. Like I said, weird. Other console statuses. Master channel input flip simply flips all currently selected line inputs to mic inputs, or vice versa. Press this button to impress friends and clients who like to see LEDs light up in long rows. Tell them it will cost extra to use this button. A lot extra. The Quad to Cues status button sends the signal on the mix bus to the musician's headphones. This means the same mix will be in the control room speakers and the musician's headphones. This is handy for giving musicians a quick copy of the control room mix so they can be rehearsing while the recording engineer continues to refine their headphone mix via the cue system. This is generally considered a good thing, except that when musicians can hear themselves, they have the annoying habit of playing without ceasing. Use this button sparingly as a result. The audio cue status button activates the control room talk circuit to the cue system automatically between takes if you have synchronization on. This allows the producer or engineer to talk to the musicians without having to press and hold down the talkback button between takes. The status lock button prevents the other status buttons from being changed by accident. This is to prevent overbearing producers from accidentally leaning on and changing the console status during recording. Tell clients it's actually the secret code for the less suck button and that it uses lots of processing power but all the big studios are doing it. Then charge an extra couple bucks an hour to hit it before every take. You can thank me later. All other inputs and outputs run through a patch bay for connecting the console ins and outs to all other pieces of gear in the studio. From compressors and EQs to reverbs and delays. I like to plug about mm, 100 patch cables in whether I'm using them or not. Besides, you've got all these racks of gear that are just decoration anyway. You gotta make them feel like they're getting what they're paid for at the very least.